Welcome back to the big boy. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, you probably know it's third winter and we're playing the scorpions in a bottle scenario, the course on pocket, pocket. It's interesting how uh, games tend to come out in sort of waves and there's been a wave of interest and uh, development of titles that deal with the course on pocket, pocket. Well, I'm having a real hard time <clears throat> saying that today. I must have the pretzel stuck in my throat. So uh, obviously Jaws of Victory came out, I think that was last year. And this has been in development for several years. And then, uh, you know, Jack Rady is obviously doing his course on pocket <laughs> uh, game as well. Big reboot, $400, all that sort of stuff. But it's when you sit down and set these games up, and obviously this is a much... Uh, more compact look at and different scale look at than Jaws of Victory, uh, you you just you see the regu the similar sets of units and formations, and it just it's all just kind of cool to see things at different scale. It'd be fun to play these all kind of side by side one one of these days and and see how they play out. Anyway, what are we doing? Uh, we've, we're starting turn one, and not much has happened because I've been going backwards and forwards over what to do, how to do it. And then as I was thinking about what to do and how to do it, I was recalling my gameplay uh, of Jaws of Victory and how challenging that was to actually create a decent breakthrough here and you know get these two uh, larger uh, tank formations, tank cores up in through here and then you bust through and you got a cat. Really, it's all about, from a supply perspective, Spola here is pretty important and for uh, from a VP standpoint if you've got any of these SS units or any units up uh, adjacent to this river here then there's VPs accrued for for the Germans so uh, the pressure's on for the Soviets to kind of crunch in here and then you've got the western front version uh, 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 flank uh, here that also needs to be cracked open and similar to other games this is uh or other titles of the same battle there's there's a area here which i think is ideal to try and attack so i've placed these they're basically a free arty shot uh, represents an accumulation of munitions and all that sort of good stuff and allows you to shoot with your artillery units uh for free in the i think it's the um Barrage segment, the air and ship only segment. I believe you can do it then is when that happens. And then in the, in the following phase down in the uh, uh, after movement, uh, we would do, sorry, after the uh, reaction phase, we would do, uh, there's another barrage segment you could fire then as well. You could fire again as well <clears throat> and get kind of get two, two shots for the turn. I think that's right. Let me just double check that. Units which conduct such a barrage are free to fire in the barrage segment of the same turn, paying normal supply cost barrage segment. So that's that's a, so that could be the combat phase is what they're talking about there as well, right? For the artillery only. So over here, I'm going to be very careful with my stand because it's very wonky, uh, and this is such a tight little battlefield that. Uh, I'm nervous about the stand. So I'm putting the the formation here. We'll barrage these three units with these one, two, three units. I, ha I have to move them up first, of course. And then over here, I've got two artillery formations. Where are they? I can't see through the camera. Well, actually, two here and one here, so three. So we'll hit these three hexes as well. We're looking for DGs and step losses so that we can... Uh, make life easier for these forces to do their business and I've got this formation in reserve and then the formation over here these guys in reserve as well with the idea being that uh, uh, we'll either attack with these units or with this uh, larger uh, the fifth guard tank will come up and, and pound away on probably the road looking to then be able to, with the reserve forces, slip through here and, and whack this guy pretty hard. And that will uh, disrupt a lot of this 
defensive line and supply lines and things like that will make a bit of a mess of things for the uh, for the Germans. And so with the Soviets here, obviously we just want to try and make a, as wide a breach here as we can. And I've got three more reserve markers, so I can put more guys in reserve if I want to. It's just a matter of who would be who would most benefit from doing that. I can maybe flip this guy over and uh, maybe uh, put an, an additional maybe an extra formation here in reserve. Not sure whether that's what I want to do yet, but we'll see. So uh, that's kind of where we're at at the moment. I'm not going to roll any dice right now. I'm going to pause the camera and let things evolve, and then we'll check back in. Uh, we've got to do some fighter sweeps and stuff like that. I need to try and take out some of this uh, German air out of the out of the equation and do some bombing runs and stuff like that to supplement this artillery effort and then we'll we'll work on things from there uh, there might be some other opportunities up here for instance uh, this little three three uh, point factor here with the 24 steps 24 combat factors attacking might uh, might be a worthwhile combat to uh, to consider up there but you know it's kind of a Kind of a tough place to get supply to, etc. Anyway, all right, we'll we'll look at all that. Talk to you soon.